Fifty years ago, people around the world gazed to the heavens as American astronauts were heading for a historic rendezvous with the moon. Father Doug McGonigal was one of the millions who watched the flickering images on TV as Neil Armstrong took the first steps on the lunar surface. Steve Kiltonic sat down with Father Doug, who earned a Ph.D. in astronomy, and spoke with him about space, the moon landing, and its impact on the world. It began with a challenge by President John F. Kennedy speaking before a special joint session of Congress. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the earth. JFK's bold national call to action would change the world. America met the challenge head on. For the next seven years, NASA focused all its effort to the fulfillment of that pledge. First with the Mercury program, then Gemini, and finally the Apollo program. It all culminated on July 16, 1969, when the massive 30-story, 6 million pound Saturn V rocket lifted off from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. On board were three astronauts, Commander Neil Armstrong, Lunar Module Pilot Edwin Buzz Aldrin, and Command Module Pilot Michael Collins. After four days and a 238,900 mile journey, the crew of Apollo 11 reached their final destination, the moon. Tranquility Base here, the Eagle has landed. On July 20th, 1969, an estimated 600 million people, one-fifth the world's population at the time, collectively held its breath, watched and listened as Neil Armstrong descended the steps of the Eagle Lunar Module and jumped off onto the lunar surface. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. It was the first time a human had set foot on a surface other than Earth. Buzz Aldrin soon joined him, and both men explored the barren landscape for several hours, conducting experiments, like gathering US rocks, and planting the American flag. Yes, indeed. They've got the flag up now, and you can see the stars and stripes on the lunar surface. Beautiful, just beautiful. After nearly a day, the lunar module blasted off from the Sea of Tranquility. The astronauts left behind a plaque with the words, Here, men from the planet Earth. First step foot upon the moon, July 1969, AD. Became in peace for all mankind. They rendezvous with the mothership piloted by Collins, who was in orbit around the moon. Four days later, Apollo 11 splashed down safely in the Pacific Ocean. President Richard Nixon greeted them, claiming that week to be the greatest week in the history of the world since creation. The astronauts received a hero's welcome with ticker tape parades like this one in Houston and later going on a 22-nation world tour. This year marks the 50th anniversary of that historic landing. In Bellarica, Massachusetts, a then 10-year-old Douglas McGonigal looked on in amazement with his family. He would later become Father Douglas McGonigal, the pastor of Our Lady of the Valley Parish. He was fascinated by space and space exploration from an early age. I've you know, always had an interest, never known a time when I didn't. Father Doug was born in 1959, right after the Russians had launched the Sputnik satellite, triggering the U.S.-Soviet space race. It was a period of time where you know, your Cheerios boxes had pictures of astronauts and Chuck Yeager and all those people, and uh, science and space and rockets and airplanes and electronics were just it was, uh, what you ate, you know, it was just breathed all the time. His father worked in the high-tech industry for General Dynamics Research, where he and other engineers developed optical components for the Mercury space capsule. Living in eastern Massachusetts, you know, a lot of the technology was being developed there, you know, and a lot of people I lived around, the engineers, the dads of my friends were all engineers working on uh, some parts of these projects. So it was all in the air. On that historic day, McGonagall was glued with his two brothers to a GE portable TV set the kind with the rabbit ears that got only 12 channels. I remember my brothers and I were sitting on the living room floor watching this black and white TV yeah, and these fuzzy the images, TV. you know, and trying to figure out exactly what it was you're looking at. The actual TV transmissions, you know, the blown out, you know, the contrast was awful, the transmission wasn't all that good, but, you know, you could figure out something was happening. As his family watched the moon landing, McGonagall knew the risks involved. The Apollo program began in tragedy on January 27, 1967, 
when a fire broke out inside the Apollo 1 command module during a pre-flight test at Cape Canaveral, killing all three astronauts, Edwin White, Virgil Gus Grissom, and Roger Chafee. We knew that the smallest little thing, you know, you know could be a death sentence for these people. So I think that was, I think what I remember more about it is, is just how brave these guys had to be. The lunar landing was not without its religious connections. Buzz Aldrin, a Presbyterian minister, received permission to bring bread and wine on the mission. Before he walked on the lunar surface, Aldrin gave himself communion. He felt strongly that as man explores space, we are in fact acting in Christ. During a radio blackout, Aldrin quoted scripture. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit, for you can do nothing without me. Pope Paul VI was known as an admirer of space travel. As the moon landing took place, he watched as it occurred through the Schmidt Telescope at the Vatican Observatory in Castel Gandolfo, Italy. The pontiff was one of 75 world leaders who penned messages for the astronauts to leave behind on the moon, writing, For the glory of the name of God, who gives men such power, we pray and wish well for this wondrous endeavor. Three months after the landing, the astronauts and their wives were invited to the Vatican, where they received gifts symbolic of the Magi, noting that the wise men were also guided by the stars. Father McGonigal never lost his childhood wonder and interest in space. He eventually earned a bachelor's and doctoral degree in astronomy from the University of Massachusetts Amherst in 1995. His dissertation, the chemistry of the interstellar medium. His specialty, radio astronomy. Father Doug became one of the founding members and president of the Amherst Area Amateur Astronomers Association. He worked on large-scale wave telescopes as a postdoctoral fellow before entering Pope John National Seminary. He was ordained in June 2000 and became pastor of Our Lady of the Valley Parish in 2010. The lunar landing remains one of humankind's greatest achievements. I think it's a moment in time that may never, ever happen again. Father McGonigal cited the JFK assassination and 9-11 as comparable moments in history that almost everyone remembers. But both those events happened unexpectedly. They were traumatic, memorizing, life-changing. But here the moon landing, everybody knew when it was going to happen. At just the right time where most everybody on the planet had access to the, to the information, could see what was happening or hear it or listen about it or you know, get a report about it instantaneously. And so there was an appointment and the whole planet paused you know, for those few moments as they stepped out on the moon. The 50th anniversary has revived interest in America's space program and of returning to the moon. Father McGonigal believes that we, as a race, are going back to the moon and then eventually on to Mars. But who gets there next is anyone's guess. China, India, and Israel have all expressed a desire to go to the moon. And billionaires like Amazon's Jeff Bezos and independent SpaceX's Elon Musk are already light years ahead of some countries. And their playground is is now spaceships and stuff, and they're pushing the technology faster than any government could ever do, because they can take risks, it's their money. From 1960 until 1972, when the Apollo program ended, about $24 billion was spent on space, which is close to $100 billion in today's dollars. Many technological advances were made during the lunar mission decade, including computer microchips, solar panels, and GPS navigation. Despite talk of the space program being too expensive and labor-intensive, it took 400,000 engineers to get to the moon. Father McGonigal believes reaching for the stars is programmed in our DNA. There's no choice for the human being uh, not to explore, not to ask questions, not to. It's the same way as saying, you know, what use is a symphony? Symphony doesn't have to justify itself. Neither does man's need for exploration. As the anniversary approached, Father Doug went on a mission to find an exact replica of the Ravel Saturn V model rocket that he built as a youth. As a 10-year-old, I did my best to build it and had great fun doing so. Well, now I'm 60 years old and you know, doing a really good job on you know, midlife crisis and all that sort of stuff. And it popped into my head, gee, I'd love to build that model. After years searching the internet, Father Doug finally tracked down the model in England. With shipping, it cost $150. For this astronomer priest, it was well worth it. He plans to build the model with a fellow priest, Father Piotr Paulus of Hadley. 
In the process, Father Doug hopes to maybe relive a special moment from his youth, a time when things were simpler and perhaps more awe-inspiring. We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills. Because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept. For Real to Real, I'm Steve Kiltonic. Despite being a busy diocesan priest, Father Doug hasn't lost his interest in rockets and the heavens, one that began more than 50 years ago. He subscribes to space journals and he's always looking for opportunities to talk on the topic of science and religion.